Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Wolf, I want to thank you again uh, for making the trip to come out and testify on H.R. 4596. This is a very important bill. Uh, I, I know that you've touched on it in your testimony, and I appreciate that, but would you mind expanding uh, upon the successes uh, of, of this program uh, that, that it will have once it is uh, reauthorized by this bill? Um, thank you for the question, Representative Bobert. Um, I think the successes have been outlined in the two original goals, recovery of the fish species and administration of, wa of allowing water development to go forward unhindered. Um, those things have go gone forward for 30 plus years. The, the alternative to that is the, the burdens of Section 7, individual Section 7 compliance, the conflicts that brings, and the potential litigation, of which we've seen none of that with these programs. So reauthorization of the programs will allow a cooperative, collaborative process to move forward and do good without bringing uh, some of the other things we've seen across the country. Yes, yeah, so uh, we, we have seen the recovery. We've seen the downlisting of, uh, of the Razorback and it's all um, the, well, the, the, of the Chubb and the Humpback Chubb. And then we've also seen that the Razorback is recommended for, for downlisting. Um, capital funding also supports major infrastructure projects at reservoirs, diversions, dams, uh, can canals, and, flood and floodplains across the basins. Uh, can you expand upon how including diverse stakeholders in the conversation to draft this seven-year authorization improve this legislation? Um, thank you for the question. I think the success of the programs have been because everybody's at the table making the decisions. Um, we all work together, whether you're a water user, uh, you work for a conservation group, you're a state, you're a federal entity, a tribe, um, hydropower. We're all at the table table and making the decisions together and collaboratively. So we've all been able to move the program forward and we hope to be able to continue that. And Mr. Wolf, of the 2,500 water users that benefit from this legislation, 1,200 of them are located in Colorado. Would you mind discussing uh, the consequences for local communities if these important programs aren't reauthorized? Uh, thank you for the question. Uh, I think without the reauthorization, these programs will go away and we'll get back to what I mentioned. Individual Section 7 compliance that brings burdens, conflict, and probably litigation. And we will cease to, um, I would argue, probably cease to see the advances in recovery of the species we've seen under the programs. It's a model that we don't want to see. We want to continue forward with the cooperativeness that we've seen. Yes, and I, I would also add that leaving uh, this, this work unfinished will risk losing control of critical water sources that underpin and help grow local economies. These projects provide water for local municipalities, tribes, major reservoirs, agriculture, ski areas, power generation facilities, and others that use more than 3.69 million acre feet of water per year. Mr. Wolf, you touched on uh, on it in your testimony, but can you elaborate on the non-federal contributions being made by states and local stakeholders to support these programs? Oh, absolutely. Thank you for the question. Um, non-federal contributions come in, in three forms. First, all the states and some other partners could provide some cash into the program themselves. There are significant non-cash contributions. Many of the states work on a lot of the monitoring and research efforts relative to species um, and some of the propaga um, propagation. There is also a significant amount of water contributions to the programs by many entities within the, si within the system. Um, that, that is a voluntary contribution provided to help meet flow targets in certain critical reaches of the habitat. So those are the three main non-federal um, contributions. Thank you, Mr. Wolf. Can you also elaborate on the importance of non-federal water users contributing nearly three million acre feet of water to benefit endangered fish? Um, absolutely. Thank you for the question. And I think I, I just started to, to address that. Yes. Um, there are certain critical reaches that are very, very important to the recovery of these fish species. Several entities across the basin contribute water on an annual basis to help to meet flow targets, meet the habitat needs of the fish, and that has been critical um, in the recovery of the fish species that we've seen. And just while we have 20 seconds, is there anything else on this uh, program that you would like to add? Um, I think I, I've said it. These are cooperative, collaborative programs that benefit water users across the basin and are recovering fish species. Thank you for introducing the bill. We hope the 
it to move forward. Yes, thank you. I, I hope uh, to see its quick passage, and I thank you again for making the trip, and thank you to the rest of the witnesses who are here today. Mr. Chairman, I yield.